Entertainment. This is the Root Dog Show. Now, here's your host, Rudy Reyes. I'm a little early. Yes, I'm early. But you know what they say, the early bird gets the worm. And of course, when I say early, obviously, uh, the gentleman to my right, you should obviously know he played in the NFL for quite some time with multiple teams. Welcome, Greg. Camer- Camarillo, I can say it in Espanol or I can say it in English. It depends on what his preference is. <laughs> but nevertheless, welcome, Greg, to the show. I appreciate Rude. it, man. Thanks for coming on. Awesome, man. Pretty glad to be here. Appreciate you getting the name right. Um, yeah, man, excited to chat with you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate the, the, the last-minute notice uh, for the show. But nevertheless, we're going to break it down here in just a second. I know yesterday I was talking um, in regards to what the Bills are going to be facing heading into SoFi, we'll talk a little bit of the MVP conversation, not dive into that too much. But more importantly, uh, Greg, when I look at this upcoming season, I broke down the schedule yesterday, who they're facing, who the favorites, who's not so favorite. But more importantly, favoring the MVP race. I know that Josh Allen, um, who's about 40, well, his family is about 45 minutes from here. He grew up in Fireball, California, I transferred out to Wyoming, played under Coach Bull who's an absolute fantastic guy. I love talking to him about Josh. His face lights up every time uh, I get a chance to talk because he knows that he's kind of prospered in the NFL uh, lore and just continues to become that much better. Uh, when it comes to this matchup, Von Miller gets to come back to L.A. where he won a title with the Rams last year. What does it mean for, for teams? You've played on quite a few teams yourself. What is it like going back to the place you had played prior or maybe two teams prior is it the same feeling? Is there nervousness going on? How does that feel when you go back into where you came from? Yeah, it's um, well, it, it's it, you got a mix of emotions, and the fun part is you're playing against all your friends, and, and that, and in football, you want to you want to beat people up, you want to smash them, but you really want to smash them when it's your friends and it's your former teammates, uh, because it's more than just you know a win and a loss. It's a sense of pride. It's a, it's a sense of bragging rights. Uh, and so the stakes are always higher when you're, when you're playing against your guys and just Rudy, same thing. Like when you're, you're playing cards against your boys, you're playing some ball in the driveway against your boys. Like you really, you really want to win. Uh, so you're going to put in that extra work, but you also got to look at that. Von Miller has a lot of knowledge on Rams individuals. He's gone against their, their linemen many times. Um, he knows certain calls and, you know, the Rams are smart enough to change them, but, Ultimately, they, he'll know more about them um, and can spread that to his team. And, and now, granted, they know a lot about him, but we all know a lot about Von Miller, and you still can't stop him. Um, so it'll be fun to watch. And then there's the excitement of going back to, to your old stadium. You know, you, you know the place well. Uh, he'll be in the visitor's locker room. But, um, you know, the, it's, you would expect more to come from Von Miller in a game like this than if it was just, you know, a regular game versus a, a different team. Yeah, no, you're you're right on that, and I think moreover, uh, when you look at where he came from, which was the Denver Broncos system in Colorado, and I, I've lived in Colorado, so I know that landscape very, very well. But for him to to leave the high country, as they say, the Mile High Country, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah. coming to California, I'm sure was an absolute you know shocker for him in regards to now I'm leaving a completely different system. Now I'll be in a new system. I'm going to play yeah. with guys like Aaron Donald and the, and the defensive line that was so stout last year, and we've seen that in the Super Bowl at SoFi. What does Von Miller have to do in order to get in the backfield and shake up, um, shake up the the opposing team and get them to really kind of instill the fear in them? Yeah, same same thing he's always done. You know, just be that guy that gets to the quarterback. Uh, you know, at, at a position like D end, it's not so much about about your system i mean obviously you know each each team plays the position a little bit differently but it would be much harder for uh a safety to come in and learn a new system a a wide receiver to come in and learn a new system when it's a dn you just say man go 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 get that quarterback um but he just i mean he's been a, a dominant force in the nfl for so long all he has to do is continue doing what he does and that's getting after the quarterback and even with the rams he wasn't a dominant player uh, every down of every game, but he came up with huge sacks when they needed them in the playoffs. 
uh, when you need a sack late in the game, that's where you call on Von Miller. So he doesn't have to be that every down tear. He just needs to be there as a pass rusher when the game's on the line. And that's what he's done for, uh, you know, however many years he's been in the NFL. So, um, you know, pretty excited to watch him a good go against his old squad, but then be paired up with the Super Bowl favorite of the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, you know what? It's really interesting because the Bills have had three nasty exits uh, from championship stages. And one of the things about the Bills prior to getting uh, even known for what they've done on the field, and, and I've had Steve Tasker, former Buffalo Bill himself, on my show, and he had hoped and crossed his fingers that the Bills are going to have a fantastic year. They're going to get over the hump and so on and so forth. What does Josh Allen himself have to do? In this game explicitly, now that he's, I don't know if he's even paying attention to the headlines, if he's looking at the headlines as an MVP favorite. Uh, and not, I mean, and I get it. You don't have to win one, you don't have to win all the games. I mean, you clearly would like to win all the games. Idealistically, that's your designation as a quarterback, right? You go in, you try to win the game every single time you touch that ball. What does Josh Allen have to do against the Rams uh, in order to make his presence known? and to really kind of set himself apart from other quarterbacks in the NFL? Uh, the same thing he's been doing to that has set him apart. Uh, he's become an accurate passer with a big arm. He's become a guy that's hard to tackle. So when he takes off or if he's in the pocket, he's big, he's strong, so he's hard to tackle. He doesn't need to really turn it up at all. You know, last year they were, what, 16 seconds away from, from advancing, uh, and the defense just had to stop. Patrick Mahomes in the slightest bit, Uh, you know, you in a game of football, you got 11 guys that need to do their job. When one guy tries to play hero ball, things fall apart. So Josh Allen just needs to keep doing what he's doing. You know, I mean, there's only two teams that get to the Super Bowl every year. And so it's not as though, you know, they're really far away. They're right there. But also every year changes. Every team changes every year. Uh, And you got to find your new identity. So Josh Allen just needs to keep doing what he's doing. Um, and then hope that the team continues down that path and you knock on that door enough times, eventually it's going to crack open. Hopefully so. Look, and you mentioned the defense for the Bills. I was hoping they were really going to put a, a serious dent uh, in what Kansas City was actually doing. Unfortunately, it was just a real fast exit, and it's almost as if they had given up in that game defensively. And, of course, they probably don't see it that way. They say, you know, Patrick – outplayed us he outthrew us you know he did what he wanted to do and we know how prolific he is he won he's already won a Lombardi he has a championship ring but when it comes to the Bills they're going to have to really dig in 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 order to stop this bullish Rams defense literally and figuratively in order to have a chance offensively to get those guys in position to win and I I, I just I I believe they're going to have the capabilities of doing so but what is Josh Allen himself? What can he be prepared for in this season that will keep him afloat in regards to not getting hit by defensive linemen? Is it the offensive line? Is it his scrambling capabilities? What does he specifically in his position have to do to get to that MVP level? Uh, you know, the gold standard is Tom Brady. Uh, and not saying that Josh Allen is Tom Brady or could even achieve that, but he has a massive amount of talent. He's playing great football. What you see from Tom Brady and his ability not to get hit even to this age is in his, clearly not his athleticism. Uh, it's his knowledge of, of the defense, his knowledge of the offense, being able to recognize what's coming at him, shifting his protection, getting the ball out quickly. All these little things that one can do other than run around uh, that can help keep a quarterback healthy. And it's about making the right choice, not necessarily the sexiest choice. You know, if someone's open quickly, get them the ball as opposed to holding on to it. Can I get it? Can I get it? And then getting smashed. Um, so you you look at the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning was amazing at it as well. Um, knowing your protection, knowing what the defense is getting, you know, trying to get you with, uh, and then making that smart decision. And it, it, you combine all of those and you help the entire team because you're not getting hit. The offensive line feels like they're doing a good job because you're not getting hit. Um, so that quarterback really has to have that knowledge. And we've seen the physical abilities of Josh Allen. You would hope that each year, and, and just like any other player, each year you add to your knowledge of the game, um, 
which makes you more of a, of a complete player and, and closer to what we see from Brady and Manning. Sure. Yeah. No, I I believe that when you see a decline, you've seen that in, in, in Peyton Manning. He could barely throw 40 yards. That was the end of his career. Um, he'd won Super Bowl again with the second team. First was Indy. Second was Denver. Um, and when you look at other quarterbacks around the league, Matthew Stafford coming off of, uh, I'm not going to say a season, any injury, but an off season repair on his elbow. Yeah. And it's almost as if, you know, he's played with the Detroit Lions for 14 years. So now he's coming into a new system, wins, wins a title, wins a Super Bowl. Finally, I don't know if that says a whole lot or a, a lot less for the Detroit Lions organization that he was able to leave them and go over to L.A., uh, where they just basically hired anybody and everybody they needed to win and just went, um, they just they just balled out in every single sense yeah. of the word. But when you yeah. look at, at at what Stafford has to do this year, is he going to be able to repeat the same type of success as he had last year to repeat as another Super Bowl champion? Uh, or is this something that's in the rearview mirror for Matthew Stafford um, as the season goes on, especially – if he gets hit, sacked, you know, somebody's yeah. full body weight laying on his shoulder. Yeah, I mean, you know, as you get older, the, the, there's a greater chance of injury. But he's still, he, unlike Tom Brady, we still see Matt Stafford's athleticism. He's still he's still able to run around um, and get things done. But, you know, the the it's so difficult to repeat in the NFL. Even if you have all the talent in the world, to be able to stay healthy, one. And then there's such – it, in a sport like football where you're playing 17 games and then each playoff game is an elimination, there's a, a huge factor of luck. Uh, in right. With Matt Stafford, they were playing the Niners last year deep in the playoffs or in the playoffs. He threw a ball that could have been fair caught as an interception. Jaquaski Tart drops it. If he catches that ball, we may not be talking about Matt Stafford as a Super Bowl champion. We may be talking about Matt Stafford as the guy who could never get there. And so there's that there's that level of luck that you need to win in the NFL as well. And so that's why it's so hard to repeat. You need all, all the, you know, everything to line up perfectly um, for you to get that win, you know, 16 seconds. And we could have been talking about Josh Allen, Super Bowl MVP, uh, but that's what makes the sport so exciting. And that's also why it's so hard to repeat because you need that talent. You need that health and you need a little bit of luck as well. Well, speaking of luck, you mentioned the New England Patriots at least twice in this conversation. Tom Brady was a recipient of that back-to-back, -back, which is the last team in Super Bowl history to go back-to-back -back under Bill Belichick. Uh, and that's where they have their six Lombardis ranking right up there with the Steelers um, having six Lombardis as well. Uh, Steelers were six to that, but you know Brady and, and company obviously not far behind, winning five and going back to back in those two respective years. Now you mentioned Tom Brady. We're going to talk about him for half a second, then I'll let you go. Tom All Brady's right. beating Father Time. He really sure is. is. He's up against the clock. <laughs> sure because Father yeah. Ta Father Time is undefeated. You know that, Greg. You know that full well. What does Tom Brady himself have to do to get back to the big game and maybe be the the ultimate goat, not just the goat, but the ultimate goat to win more Super Bowl rings, which he already has more than any other quarterback in NFL history, but to win that elusive uh, next finger ring. Uh, it's, I mean, it's just be, be Tom Brady. I, you know, I, he's an anomaly. You know, there's no, there's no reasoning behind the fact that he could still play he was 44 last year 45 this year that he could still be in the mvp conversation at that level uh i mean it's it's unreal it's amazing it's uh you know he's got he's five years older than me and i'm i get hurt thinking about playing in an nfl game and this guy's <laughs> actually doing it uh but you know they've had offensive line injuries in tampa they've got a new a newish coach i mean he's not new but he's his first you know he's the new head coach for this year in tampa bay and todd bowles uh they just got to work together as a team um and tom needs to you know get his offensive linemen on on the same page because with backups in there you, you got to build that chemistry quickly um there's no gronk which has been his security blanket for the last decade right. uh and so he has to build that chemistry with new guys in those roles so when the game's on the line and you were used to gronk running down the seam who's going to be that replacement or when tom needs a one-on-one -on -one black block on his backside from an offensive lineman can he rely on the new guy 
and that's all about you know developing that chemistry developing that trust and it'll be interesting to see if he can do that with with the with a different set of guys this year a few different guys yeah a few different guys because it's a personnel carousel on that offensive line right now <laughs> i mean you don't know who's who or who's going to show up or who's going to be that constant on your your yeah. blind side or even your your left side uh greg i appreciate you man i know you got to go i thank you for your time where can people um pick your brain about the nfl yeah i love i love twitter man that's where that's where i get all my my fun interaction at so at catch camarillo that's where I, I, we met rudy right yeah, there. So, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right um find me on twitter love to have little twitter debates and um excited to you know see people's reactions throughout the season and, and on who they think super bowl champ who they think mvps and all that good stuff yeah, absolutely, man. You know what? It is a toss-up. We don't know who's going to be there, when they're going to be there, uh, other than the date set uh, for the next Super Bowl, and, and that's in Arizona. So we'll see what that looks like. Hey, thanks again, Greg. I appreciate it. Love to have you back, man, when you're uh, more available. All right. You got it, Rudy. Appreciate it, man. Take care. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's uh, real interesting to have Greg on. This is the first time I've actually had him on the show, but it's really important to, to take – a, a key factor in all of this in, in that this is a one and done league. There's no guarantee you're going to get back to where you want to go, uh, but you have the idea as to how you're going to get there. But everybody has to buy in to that entire scheme, that entire mindset. I think it, it, it can't be understated enough that everybody needs to have the same ideas and put that into motion. With that being said, hey, this is Rudy Reyes. Thank you for joining me on a very early edition of the Rude Dog Show, but it's just great to have Greg Camarillo on and uh, would love to have him back. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take care.